tip is up. Godwin wins it back to back, and we are underway here in Spartanburg. Wofford going right to left, dressed in those home white uniforms with the black and gold trim as Safford looks down low, and Mack immediately tries to establish something on the inside. Can't get the roll. Godwin's tip wouldn't go. Bigelow runs down the rebound, but throws the pass away. Kirpin takes it away for VMI. Yeah, Trey Bonham put some pressure on him right there as he was trying to throw that ball back in, and good job by Kirkman being there to spot it. The Kedet started off in a 2-3 matchup zone. Wofford starting in a man-to-man -man defense. Kirkman, whistle on the outside. Clock. We're going to have a... Oh, I thought there was a clock issue, but yeah. we're not. Foul on Wofford. Sam Godwin, and that's one thing to look for. Sam Godwin trying to stay out of early foul trouble. Yeah, and, and that's early. <laughs> 30 seconds in, he got whistled for a foul. I'll be honest with you, I did not see it off the ball, but it was on Jake Stevens. So, so Wofford trying to be physical with him early. Those of you watching Wofford for the first time this year will note the absence of Messiah Jones. Pivot player inside who's out for the season with an Achilles injury, suffered a non-conference play. Conway's three was partially blocked by Mack. Wofford's got it. Still no score, almost a minute in. Wofford will start their offense for the second time tonight. Kick out to Bigelow. His three off the back iron. Kirpin comes away with a rebound for VMI. Good look for Isaiah Bigelow there. Couldn't knock it down, and VMI closes quickly on the defensive glass. Quick three from the corner. A little bit short. That was Tanner Manns with the attempt, and Safford brings it across the timeline for Wofford. So far, it's a pitcher's duel. <laughs> nothing, nothing. We, were, we talked about rust yeah. and the fact that these teams haven't played in such a long time. We may be seeing some early evidence as Stafford goes strong to the hoop. Off the glass, it is. That's something Morgan Safford can do for this Wofford team. He can get to the rim. He can put it on the floor, use the glass there to get it to go. Early 2-0 uh, advantage for the Terriers. Yeah, Safford's on the floor to do that and play defense. The outside shot hasn't been fallen, but when he drives to the rim, good things can happen. A lot of switching going on defensively for Wofford on defense. It's Bonham. Dribble the perimeter. Got doubled. That left Stevens open for the three, and he's made a career of doing that. Against Wofford, Jake Stevens on the board for VMI, and the key that's lead at 3-2. I don't know if someone called switch and they didn't hear it, but they ended up with two guys on Bonham and nobody on Stevens. That's an advantage VMI. Now Godwin, little jump hook, just a skitch too long. Bonham comes away with it for VMI. He really, really showed us something in Lexington last year. At 20, his career high coming against Wofford in that game. Even shut off by Godwin. They'll move it around. Good passing. Extra pass. Three from the corner by who else? Trey Bonham. And it's 62 BMI. Good ball movement. That, that was a nice job by Jake Stevens of anticipating the double team, whipping it out on the perimeter, and they each made the extra pass to find Bonham wide open in the corner. And BMI leads the SOCON and three pointers made per game, 12.7. They lead to about five other categories, too. Of course, conference play can be a different animal. We'll probably see that tonight as Larson tries to penetrate, finds Safford on the baseline. I think he caught a little glass with that three. Counts just the same, and Wofford cuts the lead to one. Good start for Morgan Safford. And then they leave Manns wide open in the corner. Second time we've seen some miscommunication on defense for Wofford, and it's back to a four-point BMI margin. They shoot it well, and if you leave them open, they can shoot it really well. Stafford will try again. Off balance three won't go. Manns comes back for the rebound this time, and BMI wants to run. Wofford cannot get into a three-point shooting contest with these guys. It's not, not the Terriers, uh, not what they want to do this year. BMI shoots about 37% from three. Wofford, 35. Wofford's had a couple of games, though, where they have gone ice cold from beyond the arc. And kind of relied on the three a little bit more than the Wofford coaching staff would like. Stevens from way downtown off the front iron, rebounded by Bigelow. Yeah, got deep in the shot clock. Maybe uh, forced it a little sooner than he had to, but wanted to make sure he got something up on the rim. B.J. Mack, he's been frustrated offensively the last couple of games against Coastal Carolina and Presbyterian. Now Larson lines up a three, rattles it home. Brian Larson shooting a great percentage from out there. 43% three-point shooter, and it's 9-8. to eight. Good extra pass that time by the Terriers. You're seeing both teams uh, be involved. You mentioned earlier, fundamentally sound. Both teams are showing that early. Bonham tries to penetrate. Safford won't let him. Now Godwin on the switch. 
I'm a little hesitation and draws the minute to now both teams look like they've settled in. Getting getting the flow back. Uh, that's important as Bonham missed that first and we'll see what he does here. A 75% free throw shooter hits one of two. Trey Bonham started all nine games that he's played in. There's a full court pressure shown by VMI. Wofford breaks it and now the Terriers have a numbers advantage. As the key that's hustle back on D. Bigelow quickly into Mack. Good ball movement by Wofford. Larson has to get the handle back though. VMI wanted a double dribble, don't get it. Still 10 on the shot clock, cross court to Bigelow. He can't handle it as well. And now he finally loses it, oh, gets it back in and lays it in. Just like you draw it up on the whiteboard. Absolutely, just how Jay McCauley <laughs> drew that play up. You gotta throw him off with some stuff early. Have three guys mishandle the ball and then a, a layup as Kirkman quickly misses on the other end. Tied at 10. 14.45 to go, Mack the spin move, gets the roll, and that's a good sign for B.J. Mack. Averaging 14 points per game, and with Klesmid out, Asai Jones out for the year, a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. There are, There is, but both defensively and offensively, you've got to get, uh, you got to get some production out of B.J. Mack, and you got to get him guarding Jake Stevens as well. Austin Patterson checked in for Wofford during that last time out as Bonham tries to work on Safford. That's why Safford's on the floor to cut out that penetration. Now Kerfman gets loose for a moment. Step back, jumper away over the outstretched arm of B.J. Mack and Camden Kerfman's on the board. He's VMI's leading scorer, more than 18 points per game. And Kedet's tied up. Ends a little mini Wofford run there, 4-0. Bigelow not shy about taking that three. That one's long. They'd like Isaiah Bigelow to kind of establish the inside game first and then work inside out. Kerpen, wow, from right in front of the Wofford bench, about five feet behind the arc, and it's 15 to 12, Kedets. Well, we mentioned the Wofford run, now VMI's on one. A little 5-0 spurt all on the hands of Camden Kerfman. Bigelow pulls up from 17. That swishes home Isaiah Bigelow with his second field goal. The junior out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Back and forth we go. It's a one-point VMI lead. Oh, I think Kerfman feels it. Did you see him hold the pose? M might want to get a hand in his face next time he comes down the floor. Tom and I were watching VMI warm up, and would you say the Kedets hit about 15 shots in a row? It's 17 threes in a row at one point. And then we said, well, there was nobody guarding him. Well, that's kind of the way that last one was. Mack cannot get the roll from right inside. Here comes VMI with the ball and a four-point lead. Stevens may have rolled an ankle there. We'll pay attention to that. Got it now, working on Mack. See if he shows any ill effects. Spin move underneath, gets Mack up in the air, and draws the foul, gets the hoop. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> Jake Stevens, preseason Southern Conference second team. We joked in the open that it seems like he's been here for 18 years and he's been doing this the whole time. You know, he baited BJ into that foul. He could have gone up with the shot as soon as he made the pivot move, but he waited and he hesitated and he got the contact from BJ Matt and got an easy lay in. But that was a, uh, as you saw in the replay there, a very fast spin move, kind of caught BJ Mack flat footed. Not only that, Stevens is an 84% free throw shooter and completes the three-point play. Brendan Watkins has checked in, as has Lewis Rowe. You see him there, number 12 for VMI. Corey Tripp getting an early run for Wofford. He's got the ball. Also, Luke Turner in for the Terriers. Wofford is uh, on the short end of an 11-2 run right now. Tripp, he's a freshman, as is Turner, wearing number zero. Terriers have a very young team yeah. on the floor right now. Four freshmen, or three freshmen, a sophomore, and junior B.J. Mack. As Tripp goes strong to the hole and draws the foul. Corey Tripp has only played in six games, only averaging about six minutes a game. You know, I think part of that is the the absence of Max Klesman. Um, he has to, Corey is going to have to play more minutes. And he brings the same, similar type of physicality that Klesman is known for, too. E exactly right. Corey was getting a, a good look at the practice we, we went to in Pittsburgh at, at Duquesne. Make your free throws like that, you'll see more playing time. David Applegren checking in early for the Terriers, the big 7-1 senior from Sweden. Kay McCauley told us before the game, all hands on deck, and you're seeing a good look at it here in this first half. 
Murray Tripp goes one for two from the line. Foul. I think they're going to get Luke Turner going over the back trying to get the offensive rebound. So that'll be the first foul on the freshman. I'll be, I will be honest with you. There is no way Corey Tripp or David Applegren was on the VMI scouting report. You're probably right. Applegren making only his fifth appearance of the year. They both played late against Presbyterian and Whopper's last game 11 days ago after the outcome was well in hand. Kirpin. Kickball Patterson. VMI will get a new 20 seconds on the clock. Austin Patterson's probably been Wofford's most consistent outside shooter, although Larson shoots a higher percentage. Patterson, the ginger ninja from <laughs> Northern California. They love to use that nickname. He's been really good from outside as Kerfman takes the inbound pass and throws it away into the backboard. That's going to be Wofford basketball. You know, for uh, put Morgan Safford on him when he was in the game defensively to try to put some height on him. Godwin has come back in for Wofford. Applegren goes back to the bench. A work it around the perimeter with Sapper. Gets into the lane, can't hit the little jump hook. Stevens, another rebound for VMI. He's already got three, go along with his six points. Well on the way to perhaps his fourth straight double-double. Beautiful cut to the basket, Kerfman lays it in. A set play with a back cut there by Camden Kerfman. And I think Morgan Safford was the guy over there for Wofford that got caught flat-footed. That's something that has bugged Watford from time to time. Coastal Carolina did it, and we've got an offensive foul on the Terriers away from the basketball. Moving screen. They're going to get Godwin, and that's his second foul. I didn't see it. <laughs> Doesn't mean it didn't happen, but... Immediately, Godwin goes to the bench of B.J. Mack, who probably thought he was going to get a little longer rest than that. Is back in. And in those, when Jake Stevens is leaning on you the whole game, too, you, you need to get your rest. Yep. That can really wear a player down. Kerfman gets loose again. This is the open look. Turner with a rebound. Now Patterson, two California natives sharing the basketball. Trip tries to get into the paint and loses the basketball. Gets it back, though, and he was fouled. Reach and foul on Sean Conway. They could have gotten him the first time the ball came loose. He got him on the wrist. They didn't call it. He didn't get him on the second time. First on Conway, second on the key debts of the half. Conway is a tough kid. He, keep in mind, he averages nearly seven rebounds a game as a guard. He hit 14 against Wofford on this floor a year ago. Tanner Manns checks in. Camden Kirkman's going to get a well-deserved rest. Wofford gets it in play. Patterson running the show outside momentarily. Now Turner can't penetrate. BJ has the ball, but probably further out. Skip pass to Larson. Shot fake and then pulls up with it in and out. And Stevens right there for the rebound. Wofford's going to have a tough time on the offensive glass with Jake Stevens back there. The backdoor pass can't connect with Brennan Watkins. It'll be Wofford basketball. I think that was Corey Tripp did a nice job on Watkins, not letting him complete his cut there on the baseline. He kind of cut him off, and uh, it was Tripp. And good defense there, forcing that ball to be thrown out of bounds. Tripp, freshman out of Medina, Ohio. Going to the floor and stealing the ball is Manns. Here comes VMI. I think Wofford's coaching staff wanted a foul. And they will somehow lose 6'11". Jake Stevens. Yeah, he's, he's the glue. He's been there, uh, and, and, you know. In this today's college athletics, the Jake Stevens of the world need to get more, more attention, more praise, because he's doing it the right way. He's sticking around there and, and uh, doing what he's best for his school. Don't look now. Wofford is trailing by 10, but B.J. Max is going to go to the free throw line. They're going to get Sean Conway, who's now picked up two quick fouls himself. He got B.J. right across the forehead. Mack didn't get the roll and bumming hard about that, but he'll go to the free throw line. B.G. Mack averages 14 points a game. We talked about Coastal Carolina and Presbyterian, just nothing really came to him easy in those games. Hits the free throw, he's an 80% free throw shooter. Herfman back in, Conway out for VMI. Isaiah Bigelow is back in for Wofford as well. B.J. 
Came over a couple of years ago from South Florida and fit right into the team, the culture here at Wofford. Chops the VMI lead down to eight as we head halfway through half number one in this conference opener for both the Keydets and the Terriers. Stevens kind of playing point center right now. A lot of the offense goes through him. Bonham, it's deflected by Patterson, but Stevens gets it back and then dribbles it off his foot. Yes, Wofford basketball. Stevens trying to say that B.J. Mack deflected it. Officials didn't agree with that, so Terriers force a turnover. No, I, don't I don't think he did. I don't think he did either. I think that was all Jake Stevens. Uh, Larson will bring up the ball. Now Turner, they're looking for Mack inside quickly. He's going to have to get up before Stevens can get back over there. And the second time works for B.J. Mack. BMI had switched and Mack had a mismatch and they found him. Now Bonham right back and he will draw a foul inside. Good head and shoulders fake that time by Trey Bonham. You know, I watched Trey Bonham play last year and I was getting Bubba Parham flashbacks a little bit. Very similar type player, really, really fast, really good with the basketball. As you see BJ Mack up called for the foul. That's his second. Sam Godwin's got two. Wofford's got foul issues in the post. Bottom at the line for the second time tonight. That one is true. And Bottom missed three games with an injury. He was on the all freshman team of the Southern Conference last year that was pretty much all key debts and terriers. If you remember, Wofford had three players on the all freshman team. VMI had two. Second one in and out, so it remains 26 to 19. VMI leading by seven, 9.15 to go here in the first half in Spartanburg. Larson left open for a three. It drifted off to the left offensive board by Godwin, who outdueled Stevens, and then Stevens takes it away from him. I think Sam tried to throw it off of Jake Stevens and went off his foot but stayed in bounds. Kirkman left open but left that one short. Wofford's got to do a better job of getting out to the shooters beyond the arc as Patterson shut off on the baseline by Manns. Yeah, good defense that time by Tanner Manns. Now Turner to Larson. Larson outside the arc, directing some traffic. Finds Bigelow at the elbow. Kick out to Patterson. Three is good, and Wofford's best three-point shooter by volume. Austin Patterson makes it a four-point game. Yeah, Terrier's on a little bit of a run here, and Trey Bonham just... Nice spin move around Austin Patterson. There's Kirkman from way outside the arc, down a little bit long. Look at Isaiah Bigelow's sky for the rebound. He was elevation right there by Isaiah. Thought about a pull-up three. Instead, ball's knocked away, and then stolen back by Bigelow, and he's fouled. Yeah, they got Trey Bonham with yeah, that. Kind of a loose ball, mid-air collision between two players simply going for the basketball. First on Bonham. Fourth team foul on VMI as you see the collision. But with the ball's kind of up for grabs there, you can kind of hard to figure out who, who to call the foul on there. This Bigelow got the worst of the collision, so they called it on Bonham. Trip back in the game. Godwin to Patterson. Looking for the return pass to Godwin. He's got a Wofford wants a foul, didn't get it. Wofford coaches are irate as Godwin misses. Yeah, every single Wofford coach stood up. <laughs> Trip shuts off Watkins on the baseline, and VMI will reset. Stevens hands off to Kirkman. He is not shy, is he? But lately, nope. he hasn't been connecting. That three misses, Trip with a rebound. He hadn't met a three he doesn't like yet. Bigelow holds for a second. Gets it to Trip. They are really, really looking for Sam Godwin inside on Jake Stevens. Got to be careful. Godwin's got two fouls, though, as Larson tries to penetrate. Now Patterson straight on three. On the run, it's no good off the front of the iron. Kerfman comes away with it for VMI. That rebound fell all the way to the floor. It hit the ground before anybody picked it up. 26-22, VMI leads as we near seven minutes to go first half here in Spartanburg. Mans. Puts it on the floor. Now Watkins lines up a three. Thought Patterson may have gotten a piece of that, but maybe he just missed it that badly. It, yeah, it was just a bad miss. Now Larson's going to slow things down for a second here. I, I think Patterson may have forced him to shoot it a little quicker than he wanted to. 
Larson, the quarterback, the senior on this team. Godwin, again, good position on Stevens. Left that one short. Good defense by the VMI big man there. Honor Huff has it for VMI. Trip on him. Now VMI will look to go inside. Kerfman, three, swish. Shot it over six foot seven Isaiah Bigelow and Camden Kerfman now has 13 points. VMI's up by seven. Yeah, he had missed his last two threes. Larson on the baseline, looking for Godwin, and again they can't connect. Kirkman comes away with it. Stevens looking back door from Kirkman, not there, so Mans will line up a three, and it's an air ball. Patterson takes it away for Wofford. Up ahead, trip, blocked by Stevens, who comes away with the basketball. Wofford's getting the ball inside. They just can't convert. Huff for three. That's long. Offensive rebound, Mans. Nobody blocked him out, and Wofford dodged one there because he missed the putback. Everybody needs a media timeout. We're still waiting for the under eight media timeout, and we're at 522 to play. Tongues hanging out as players go back and up and down the floor. Larson, step back. Three. Sure, it's good. <laughs> You know, when you're a senior, you really deserve a role like that at home. Basketball, it means they're getting extra passes, and uh, guys are, are, are kind of putting the team first. Wofford's got three assists on nine makes. Carrier's winning the rebounding battle 16 to 12, but VMI has had a chance to jack up a lot more shots as Stevens leaves the three short. Larson runs it down, goes cross court to Keaton Turner, who's checked into the game for the first time. Now Mack on Stevens. BJ playing with two fouls. Head and shoulder fake goes up and over Stevens for two. That was just good, strong basketball. Good, two good post players going head to head right there. Oh, looked like Huff may have walked. They missed him. Excuse me, Bonham. Now Stevens backs in. Mack goes up and under and lays it in. Remember how they used to call Tim Duncan the big fundamental? Yeah, <laughs> Jake Stevens Jake's is the SoCon version. That was just. Excellent footwork down low. He's up to double figures and points. It'll be fun to watch him and Matt because both of them make great use of the footwork. Yep. Really fundamentally sound. This could be a really good battle inside during this stretch. Safford's looking for Matt. Has him on the left block. Stevens tries to wall up. He pulled the chair out from underneath them and forced really been the story for the Keydets here in this first half. Yeah, absolutely. They've done a nice job inside, outside. Uh, VMI would love to uh, sit on this thing over the next three minutes and 48 seconds and increase this lead. Wofford would try to look to cut into it, see if they can take a lead in the half. Bottom tries to turn the corner, finds Manns, who can't work on Bigelow. Still eight to shoot. Kirkman on Larson. Long three by Huff. Won't go. Coming back to get the rebound. Nicely is Bigelow. He'll bring it up. That was a well-guarded possession that time by the Wofford defense. Inside foul. They held. They had the mismatch. Godwin on Huff, or was it Bonham? It'll be on Bonham. I think Godwin kind of fell awkwardly there. That's the one thing that Wofford cannot afford to plasmid out with Messiah Jones out for the year. No more injuries needed on that Terrier sideline. It's only the fifth VMI foul. Austin Patterson will check in for Wofford. Keaton Turner will take a seat. Bonham now has two fouls for VMI, um, so he'll have to sit. The official moves Ryan Larson from one side of the basket to the other, so the Terriers have to change their formation. Safford takes it inbound. They'll work it around the perimeter. 3.20 to go. Wofford with the ball trailing by four here in the first half. And a battle between Godwin and Kerfman, and Godwin just got whistled for his third foul. Wow. He can't believe it. That's that's tough. It's another look. Watch on the left side of your screen. Uh, I think that was a good job of selling it. You know, and I think the other thing is there's such a height discrepancy there. Sam's arm is up around Kerfman's head, and so it just it, it looks, looks worse than it no is. No doubt, no doubt. But give Kerfman credit for selling it. Backdoor cut, wouldn't go. It's off a terrier leg. It'll stay with VMI. VMI hit a couple of those early, and Wofford has done a nice job in the last part of the first half of defending that backdoor cut.
Up will rebound, or inbound rather. Now Stevens and Mack. Kerfman swings it around. Eight to shoot. Kerfman wants to ISO on Larson. Looking for Stevens, not there. He'll have to shoot it over Mack and drills it. Candid Kerpin as the shot clock buzzer went off. 34 to 27 VMI. He's got 16. Man, not much Wofford can do about that. That's just a guy making a shot there. Larson. Wofford tried to go inside almost at every possession here. Instead, Safford's going to throw up a three. I don't think that's the shot Wofford was looking for. Bigelow trying to save it, but he can't. Here comes Huff. Now Watkins. And I think there's a foot on the sideline, indeed. Tanner Manns is saying, who me? Yeah, you. Wofford basketball. Bad court awareness. I'll break that out by once a game. Typically twice a game, once for either team. I think teams are better about it this year because they've heard you say it for about three I, years now. They've never changed the size of the basketball floor. It's, it's, it's the same size everywhere. And, just don't understand how guys are always sta standing out of bounds. This is shaping up to be a season low for first half points for Wofford is <laughs> pleasantries between Manns and Mack. It'll be a hell ball possession BMI, so give Tanner Manns props for tying up BJ Mack down low. Got one hand in there and then secured it with the other and one of those standoffs where neither guy was gonna give up possession of the ball. And Two minutes to go, first half. Yamai with the ball, a seven-point lead. Larson tries to strip it from Stevens, and then they get a hand in. Still, Jake keeps it. Finally bailed out by Huff. He'll start things over. Huff caught in between. Now the help comes over, but Bigelow can't stop Jake Stevens. He's now got 12 to go along with six rebounds, and the VMI lead back up to nine. He and Kerfman have got... 28 of their 36. Patterson for three off the back iron. Offensive rebound, Safford, and puts it back in. That was a man's rebound by Morgan Safford there. Wofford had to have that one, too. They were in danger of going down double digits. Watkins loses the ball. Bigelow takes it away. Fourth VMI turnover. Wofford wanted to run. VMI got back. Bigelow for three. It's a little long. Offensive board, Mack. Do 20 seconds, and then he throws it over the head of Bigelow, and that'll be a turnover. That's going to be the ninth Wofford turnover of the half, and Wofford had actually been protecting the ball pretty well. Leading into this, averaging about 12 turnovers a game, but as we said, nine in the first half already. David Applegren checks in, Corey Tripp checks in for Wofford. Quick inbound play. They left Conway open. He misses the open shot. That's a break for Wofford. Now Bigelow. Wofford again for the lineup. You don't often see early in games. It's Tripp. Finds Bigelow. His corner three is long. Isaiah Bigelow hasn't really found range from outside. Conway with a rebound. Terrier's shooting percentage is down to 37%. Up three behind the screen, and that goes down. VMI matching their biggest lead at 10 in the final seconds of the first half. 15 to go. Wofford will have one last opportunity here. Larson gets a screen from Applegren. Keeps the dribble going, and he draws the foul. Question is, was he in the act of shooting or not? He Two was. shots coming up. Yeah, on or off. With the foul, 16 foul on BMI. So Ryan Larson, who's an 84% free throw shooter, the senior out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Oh, they're going to say now it was on the floor. Oh, the referee held up two fingers. He did. And Huff's number three, uniform number three. So, all right. Now scratch that. It'll be Wofford ball with 8.6 seconds to go first half. Trip looking to inbound to Safford. Five, he backs down Huff. No call, ball deflected by Stevens. He comes away with it. Conway's guy that you would see a lot of times 
he would just start hitting threes and, and, and force things to, to kind of change for uh, the, the other team playing defense. And Wofford, as you said, Jim, somebody needs to step up in that. And if you're VMI, just keep doing what you did in the first half. Larson's three is off the mark. Put back Bigelow won't go. Had a good look. It'll stay with Wofford. Boy, Isaiah Bigelow got up there. Remember, missed last year after suffering a knee injury and he didn't lose any ups as you can see here when he I think he was a little too far away to dunk that as uh, he certainly has the athleticism to is Austin Patterson is starting this half on the floor for the Terriers Mac puts the ball on the floor he and Stevens have been a good battle so far little arm bar by Stevens didn't work Mac with a jump hook and a good start to half number two by BG Mac he's the first Terrier in double figures with ten Wofford needs more more of that from BJ. They also need some guys just to to maybe guard a little harder against Kirkman and Stevens. Play a little more physical with those guys. Stevens up top, looking back door, nothing there. Now Manns helps out. He's working on Patterson. Conway back out to Mann, shoots the three over Patterson and drains it. Tanner Manns gets into the act. He's got six points. BMI lead. Now 11. Yeah, this is their largest lead of the night after both teams have had a possession here this half. Larson at the free throw line, back out to Bigelow. Now Mack, good ball movement by the Terriers. VMI staying put on defense, however. Entry pass, and Stevens climbed over the back of B.J. Mack, and he knew it. All three officials blew their whistle, so you knew something was coming. Even Jake Stevens nodded his head. In agreement, only the first foul on Stevens. That's why he can play that aggressively right now. This is only his first foul. And that's experience. Yeah, Tom. absolutely. Don't dig a, an early grave, so to speak, in terms of foul trouble. Wofford inbounds to Safford. Well, that's why Sam Godwin's not in right now for Wofford. He, he's picked up three fouls in the first half. Mack will put Conway on him on a switch, and then Patterson. Another offensive foul on Wofford away from the basketball. No, they called a travel. Or did they? Okay. The the official all the way in front of that's, the Wofford. That's uh, what bench. got me. Yeah, <laughs> called the travel. Where there were two other officials closer. Watch Patterson here. Mm. <laughs> Tenth Wofford turnover. BMI with the ball and an 11 point lead here early in half two. Conway thought about shooting. Bigelow popped out on him. A man switch Bigelow's on him Stevens is guarded by Patterson they're looking for the big man and coming over to help is Safford knocks the ball away nice defensive play by the sophomore yeah the only way that would have been better for Wofford is if Morgan Safford would have been able to catch it and and uh, complete the steal there is five on the shot clock so VMI is gonna have to do something quick bottom inbounding quickly curve and fall away off the side of the backboard and Wofford wants to run with Larson VMI hustles back defensively Falling down is Safford, and he is hurt. Morgan Safford in the lower corner of your screen tried to slam on the brakes, and he went down in a heap. I hope he's okay. Holding that right ankle, and this is the it, last thing this Terrier team needs right now. I saw the official with a shoe, but it's his own shoe that he lost. I think Morgan rolled his right ankle. Luke Turner is up to come in for the Terriers. Yeah, he tried to slam on the brakes in that corner and get ready for possibly getting a pass and shooting a three is he is going to gingerly walk back to the Wofford bench and carry your team that has really suffered the injury bug Messiah Jones out for the year Klesman unavailable tonight next man up I know we hear it in all kinds of sports that next man right now is going to be Luke Turner who comes off the bench. I think Morgan is okay. I think he just was like one of those little slight rolls that happens. And when it first happens, it hurts. <laughs> it, it feels like a knife going through you. But as you get blood flow going back to it, it can, uh, it can start to feel a lot better. Mack, the high post. Now Larson working off a of Mack screen. Now BJ gets it back. Mack and Stevens yet again. BJ cross court. Turner defended well by Manns, but a hand check and a foul on Tanner Manns. 
tell you what I like after that play ended, even after the, the whole foul, was Luke Turner still finished this play with Jake Stevens. You see there, they kept going, and he still put it in there at the end. It's just a, it's a mental thing right there just to do that. That is the first foul on man, second foul of the half on VMI. Offers with the ball, but they're trailing by 11 here at home. Larson. Bigelow still looking inside to Mack. He's double teamed, so Bigelow has a good look at a three, and it's long. Patterson got hip checked at another foul on Mans. Trying to box out Patterson. Threw the hip out, got called for another foul. Yeah, Dan Earl not happy with Tanner Mans there. Not necessarily upset with the call. He's upset with his guy not moving his body a little bit more to, uh, to get a good box out. Offord is really trying to pound the ball inside, and that's maybe because the threes aren't falling. As Bigelow drives but leaves it short, Max follow won't go, and Stevens gets it for VMI. Wofford can't buy a bucket. Yeah, some good cracks there, but can't get anything to fall for Wofford. Bottom left alone. Patterson finally picked him up, but that left Kerfman open. His three is long. Conway soars for the offensive board. Kerfman another try. Leaves that one short. Tap back out. Third try. No. Turner comes away with it for Wofford. One on two. Knocked away by Kerfman. It'll be Wofford basketball. Good hustle by Luke Turner to secure that ball finally for Wofford. You know, and right now, normally I'd say I don't like him doing that one on two. But somebody's got to kind of create some excitement, some, some energy. So if the freshman... Uh, can try to do that for Wofford, then more power to him. Kerfin knocked it away, but wound up in the Wofford student section, of which there are no students, because the students are still on break. So it's Wofford basketball. Patterson shooting over Mans, hits the three and draws the foul. That could be something that kickstarts this. And Tanner Mans called for his third foul in the last minute. Doesn't like the call, but I just don't think he gave Austin Patterson any place to come down. Jumps into him. You don't really see the end of it there, but trust me, it happened right in front of our broadcast position. So Austin Patterson will go to the free throw line. At a career high 20 on this floor against Kennesaw State. Can't convert, though. And it remains an eight point VMI lead. That's just kind of giving something away there. When you, you hit a three-pointer and then you get a crack at a four-point play and, and you miss the free throw. Bottom, what an explosive first step. Hangs in the air and puts it in over trip. He is explosive. So just when you get a shot of energy in the place in the building, you miss the free throw and then VMI comes down and gets two and it's back to a 10-point margin. Stafford's back in. That's good news after that little ankle mishap offered just a little bit out of sorts offensively nice fake by turner and he knocks down the three so the freshman trying to lead wofford back they yeah, got the freshman and a half patterson and the true freshman turner and they've scored the last six for wofford stevens and matt they're going to try to help out with sapper but that leaves kerfman open again and guess what Candid Kerfin now has he was unavailable to play it was going to be a forfeit now the conference like many conferences Tom has changed that to a no contest the key phrase there affected games can be rescheduled and in our eyes should, should. yeah <laughs> so That's hopefully awful. things won't get to that point but we do have a couple of teams under COVID protocol right now and there is a Wofford turnover that leads to for 12 from the field, five for 10 for three point range. He's got 19 of the key deaths to also have 12 points from Jake Stevens and lead it by 10. Good job by Sam Godwin there back in the game, rotating over and slapping away that entry feed. Godwin playing with three fouls, got them all in the first half. Offer really needs him to help with the defensive effort against Jake Stevens. Bottom, dribbling against Keaton Turner, goes baseline all the way to the other side to Huff, whose three Ooh. is off the side of the backboard. Godwin with the rebound. This is one of Wofford's better defensive possessions, and they're doing it with Keaton Turner and Corey Tripp, both in the lineup. Luke Turner in as well. Tapper's looking inside for Godwin, who's got a mismatch with Kerpin on him. Now Tripp 
Wings it to Turner. Keaton Turner's three is off the back iron. Big strong rebound by Conway for the Keydets. You look at this Wofford lineup and you start to think, where's the offense going to come from? And Huff goes loose. Goaltending called on Godwin. That'll count in honor Huff. Now has five. The VMI lead as big as it's been at 12. Another look at it there. Good call by the official. Yeah, it was in the cylinder. And you look, you know, again, you got... Two true freshmen, three sophomores on the floor for Wofford. None of them really scoring elitely this year. Eaton Turner's three, no good. Wofford still ice cold from outside, and here comes Bottom on the run. No look pass to Conway. It goes up and misses the layup, rimmed out. Put a star next to that. That could have blown this game open. Trip. Finds Turner in the corner. His three is long. Watford's been long on almost every three tonight. Carrier's now six wow. for 21, and then converting on the end. Other end is Jake Stevens. 7 0 run after Wofford had cut it to seven. 51 37. Grip spins away from bottom, and his pass is intercepted by Kirpin. The inexperience that Wofford has on the floor is showing right now a fast break bucket for Sean Conway. And it's 53-37. Really surprised Wofford didn't use a timeout right there. I know they only have two left, but this thing's getting dangerously close to being blown open where you can't you can't recover. Eaton Turner, the trip. All this happening on the perimeter. Offers is kind of a lot of standing around right now for the Terriers offensively is Godwin. The circus shot under under Jake Stevens with a funny look on his face running back down the floor. Godwin with his first bucket of the game. Stevens, good pass in the corner. Kerfman can hit it. Rebounded by Bonham, who's down there somewhere. Is there a foul or a held ball? Hell ball, stay with BMI. You know what you see there? You see three Terriers around the ball and one VMI player hits the deck to get it. I, I will say this, VMI wants this game more than Wofford right now. That can change over the next 1247, but Trey Bonham hit the floor to secure the ball for his team and three Wofford guys watched him. Three subs in for Wofford is Bigelow, Larson, and Mack come back in. I think Jim McCauley might have been Wanting to send a message to his upperclassmen playing all the kids in that last stretch. Watkins almost fell over, kept his dribble. They go cross court and inside and missing everything. Shot clock went off, didn't matter. Rowe missed everything. On the other end, Bigelow, can he find the range? This time he can. Isaiah Bigelow. That's it to it. 11 point lead. Wofford's still got a long way to go, but plenty of time left. Yeah, Over there's 12 minutes. Absolutely. Kerfman driving on Mack. Off balance shot won't go. Larson with the board. Doesn't have numbers. He's got to pull it back to Safford. He's got a full head of steam. Goes up strong, and that's going to be a block. For Wofford, this, we talked about the fundamentally sound qualities that both of these teams has as Morgan Safford does knock down that first free throw. VMI, 14 assists, five turnovers. Wofford, and I don't know that I've seen this in 23 years, three assists, 13 turnovers. One for two from Safford. Conway the rebound, VMI with the ball at a 10 point lead. Stevens and Mack, it's been fun to watch. Stevens a great passing big man. This time he's gonna back BJ down. BJ walls him up, so VMI's gonna pull it back out. One thing you don't want to do is help defense off of that man there, Kerfman, who finds Stevens. Mack runs at him, it doesn't matter. Stevens drains a three. Jake Stevens now with 17. 17 and 9, one rebound away from his fourth straight double double. More importantly, lifts that BMI lead back to 13. Kick ball will stay with Wofford as Matt goes down awkwardly. BMI just has so much more energy right now. You can see they, the way they they're do. walking and strutting around. Yeah, body language says a lot. 
And this is the conference opener for both teams. VMI seven and five in non-conference play. Wofford was eight and four. Patterson gets into the paint, finds Mack, good pass inside. BJ converts and won. Give the credit to Austin Patterson. Usually he gets the ball and everybody thinks shot and said he put the ball on the floor, made a nice bounce, bounce pass. Yeah, that was a very fundamentally sound bounce pass and B.J. Mack already had a shoulder past Jake Stevens and, and quite honestly a silly foul there on Jake Stevens. Just let him have the two and get down the floor. The second foul on Stevens is this time Mack converts the three-point play. I was just kind of hanging around 9-10. 11, 12, right now it's a 10 point lead. You just wonder if they can chop it down to five or less than that, if VMI starts to get a little bit tight. They're under, leading all this way. Under eight media timeout, you want this thing less than seven. Conway left open, he'll launch a three and banks it in. Yeah, he did smile. I'm just checking oh, yeah. to see. Crack the smiles, he walked by us. Sean Conway with his first three. Now he's laughing because he, he, I caught his eye. And <laughs> hey, you know what? It counts all the same. He back up to 13. Offered in the perimeter. Patterson again driving in a reverse layup. This kid's showing moves that we haven't seen this year. Austin Patterson, who arrived at Wofford a semester early last year. Trying to single-handedly lead them back. A block inside on bottom, and now he's tied up by Larson. That'll be a held ball. Wofford basketball. You know, and, and, and Wofford's been able to drive on VMI. I think they need to do more of that. We said earlier, Terriers cannot win a three-point shooting contest against VMI, and they don't need to try. They need to attack, uh, attack the rim with the guards, uh, set screens, and that's what's allowing Wofford to climb back into this thing, right? Uh, you know, the last... Bucket by Austin Patterson, a drive. The last bucket by B.J. Mack was because of an Austin Patterson drive that resulted in an easy two. Patterson's got eight now as Larson works on Conway. Now back, quick double team. Somebody's open. Is it Safford? Yes. Good look by Ryan Larson. Safford knocks down the three. He hasn't been shooting the three great, only 24% from three-point range, but now Wofford is within eight. Yeah, and that's where you get the inside-outside working. You, 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 you look inside and then go back out. Conway hoists up a three. Ball's knocked out of bounds. It should be Terrier ball, and it is. And now this crowd is starting to get into things. Yeah, Jake Stevens had that ball go off his hand. Huff's going to check in for Watkins. They may be missing Manns a little bit. I don't know that he's come back in. He's got four fouls. Yeah, had those three quick ones in a minute, and then just got his fourth before the last media timeout. A bucket here would be huge for the Terriers. Oh, and they throw it away. It's steal by Huff. Huff read that thing beautifully. He knew it was coming right back out after the double team. 14th Wofford turnover of the night. Now Bonham will run the VMI offense. Wants to get a screen from Stevens. Look for the return pass. We've got a foul inside. Got a hold. I think Patterson on the mismatch, perhaps. Yeah. Had a whole bunch of jersey on Jake Stevens. That's not the worst foul at all because VMI had an easy bucket if, if Patterson just doesn't hold Stevens there. Stevens gets the inbound. Pass Mack on him. Cross court tipped by Larson out of bounds. It'll stay with VMI. Wofford wants those deflections in the passing lane and without Klesman available, they haven't gotten as many as they used to. Luke Turner in, Morgan Safford out for Wofford. Luke Turner out of Temecula, California, Santa Margarita High School. Six, seven freshmen. And Larson with the steal. Herpin trying to get back on defense. Larson uses him as a shield and lays it in. 59-53, as close as Wofford's been in quite a while. I, I guarantee you this is either going to Stevens or Kerfman, and Wofford's got to guard it. Kerfman's got it momentarily, looking for Stevens inside, and Mack pulled the chair out from underneath him, and Stevens hit the deck. Steal by Mack, Patterson trailing. 
Stevens now just getting back into the play. Too bad Wofford couldn't take advantage of that from their perspective. Larson, corner from the bench. Short, Stevens with a rebound. Yeah, had a good look there. And Bonham kind of telegraphed that pass. P.G. Max stuck out the big left sneaker. Yeah, you could see that big, long bounce pass coming because of the way he was winding up with it like a pitcher. So 26 seconds on the shot clock for VMI. They have the ball, a six-point lead. Wofford is chipped back into that lead here in the second half. Bottom to Stevens out top. Jake holds it, he's got to get rid of it. Finds bottom, 10 to shoot. Now Kerfman, Larson wants him to shoot from there, I think. Penetrating his hop and a nice dish to Stevens. Very patient offensive possession by VMI deep in the shot clock. And I tell you what they do so well, Bonham and Huff, they get to the rim, and when guys collapse on him, Stevens is there just to have the ball delivered in his lap. Mack blocked by Stevens. B.J. gets it back in. Will he go up a second time? He will. B.J. Max not scared. Puts it back in. Working hard. 61-55. And it's still a lifetime to go in this thing with seven. 15 to play. 15 points for Mack, who's breaked out, broken out of his mini scoring slump the last two games. Now can he play some D on the other end? Switches out on Bottom. Bottom has a step, goes up and over Mack, can't get it to go. Strong rebound, Morgan Safford for Wofford. Oh. Larson saves it from going out of bounds and then telegraphed that pass and stolen by Bonham and he fourth of the year but it's also his fourth in a row which tells you he's been playing good basketball headed into Christmas break and has continued that here tonight with a step Bonham goes up strong boy what a move by the sophomore from Mobile Alabama Trey Bonham they've got a great young backcourt with Kerfman Bonham Huff coming off the bench the lead is back up to eight. Wofford trying to counter with Mack. Poked away by Stevens. B.J. gets it back, finds Larson. Safford's three, way off the mark. And rebounded by Kerfman. 6-10 to go. Bottom directing traffic, now gets it back to Camden Kerfman. VMI is so good in their half-court offense. And they don't mind playing this type of game where they can screen you to death. Not turning the ball over, only eight key debt turnovers. They leave Conway open, and that is going to be a tough one to swallow for Whopper. They make the run, the couple quick back buckets by VMI, and the key debt lead is back up to 11. Larson dribbles it on the sideline. Another Whopper turnover, their 15th. You're not beating anybody if you turn the ball over 15 16th, times. excuse me. 16th, even worse. And that's, that's unforced. You can't let a one player's, you know, and Wofford's missing Messiah Jones, but he's been out for a long time. But Max Klesman not playing with an injury. But Wofford just hasn't had any kind of energy or, or flow tonight. Credit VMI for a lot of that. Absolutely. You got Wofford with 16 turnovers, VMI with 17 assists. Those are big numbers and a foul on the Terriers. It'll go against Ryan Larson. That's his first, only the third foul on the Terriers, that, that's which may a, not be a good thing. I was going to say, that's not a horrible thing that the foul was called because you've only got three, and you're going to need to probably get in a position at some point in this, this half where you're fouling. Kerfman takes the inbound, gets into the paint, throws it in off the glass. Camden Kerfman with a game-high 21, and it's 68 to 55. Patterson gave Whopper to spark earlier in this half. Can he do it again? Now Safford takes it to the hole. Goes up strong, can't convert, but draws the foul. They got Trey Bonham with that one. That's his third personal. 17 foul on VMI. So the, the one good thing for Whopper is you can score some play, points with the clock not ticking off, but you've got to hit free throws. Yeah, you got to hit free throws. Morgan Safford's one for two tonight. A 56% free throw shooter this season gets the first. Huff out, man's back in with four fouls for VMI. 
We mentioned that Wofford wanted to have the thing around under eight with uh, at the under eight timeout. They did. And now you're starting to look at the under four, and you'd like to have it, you know, a five point game. Taffer gets the roll on free throw number two. 68 57. Godwin will come back in for Wofford. Mack out. Stafford, the leading scorer on the floor right now for Wofford, who's got 13. Stevens beat everybody down the floor. Godwin finally gets back. The VMI can afford to be very patient here right now as we're under five minutes to play. That's exactly what Trey Bonham will do. Dribbles over to the other side of the floor. Trying to catch Wofford on a switch. They'd love to get it inside to Stevens, who shakes Godwin. Sam comes back in, but cannot stop the 6'11 senior. Jake Stevens now with 21. Stevens and Kirkland are having a battle to see who can be the high scorer tonight. <laughs> One scores, the other scores. If they have a contest or something, the high scorer gets an extra ice cream. Stafford's floater goes. Quick top combined points. The rest of the team has 28. The Kedets have the ball at an 11-point lead. Conway's got it in the front court. BMI's now over 50% shooting at 50.9 percent and you look at uh, assistant turnovers vmi 18 and 8 wofford 5 and 16 that's for me that's the difference in the game bottom tries to create some space on bigelow five to shoot will get into the paint has to throw one up and <laughs> that's the kind of night it's it's going everything vmi's way right now as trey bottom hits it at the shot clock buzzer he's got 11 72 59 Back on the other end, P.J. Mack for three. Trying to shoot Wofford back into this, but time's running out. Held ball, it'll stay with VMI. Good defense by Ryan Larson. Now you can take that risk here with 323. The fact that you only have had three team fouls called this half, I think you need to do those kinds of things. Yeah, but it gets down to Wofford needs to foul late. You don't want to have to foul four times to put VMI on the line. Only three team fouls, as Tom said. Wofford's in the bonus, as VMI has committed seven. Get it inbounds to Conway, right back to Kerfman. Wofford trying to double team, but the Kedets break the press and draw a foul. Isaiah Bigelow will get tagged with the personal. Only his first fourth team foul on Wofford. Again, who's got to go for steals? If you can't get them and, and you foul right now, it doesn't really matter for Wofford because everything is on VMI's side with a 10-point margin, three minutes to play in the game. Jake Stevens right there at the other end. Gets it knocked away. Steal. Corey Tripp. He'll bring him across the logo. Trailing is Saffer. Now Mack. Long three by Larson is off the mark. Nobody underneath for Wofford. You've got to hit shots like that yeah. if you're going to come back late in a ball game. You know, that goes, you're, you're down to seven. Now, VMI can run a weave up top. They can just, they can run clock all they want. Stevens, a great ball handler for a big man, gets it to bottom. Looking for a return pass, not there, but they've got a mismatch trip on there. And a long rebound comes right back out to bottom, and VMI's got a new 20 on the shot clock. That offensive rebound may do it because they can just milk more clock off uh, off here. And again, Wofford still has only committed four fouls. Kerfman on the ISO. Underneath, knocked away by Bigelow. Here comes Tripp on the other end. Bigelow, three, good. Isaiah Bigelow, quick. BMI gets it in bounds. Wofford neglects not to foul, at least not right away. Going for a steal, and finally they do foul Bonham. Bigelow commits his second, so this 15 is, foul. Both teams are congregating near the free throw line because you just assume this late in the game you're going to be shooting free throws. Well, that's not the case. Only the fifth foul. Mans will inbound for VMI. Bonham gets it. I can afford to take a lot of time off the clock, Wofford. Once it gets past about 10, then you don't want to foul. You don't want to reward them for using that clock. So now Wofford's going to play straight up defense. 
ISO for Kerfman with six to shoot. Max switches out on him. He steps way back, launches it, almost went in off the board, and there's Stevens to clean up the mess. That might about do it. You know, Wofford had been so great on the glass all night, and then when VMI had to have an offensive rebound, they got it. And there goes Bigelow, hold everything. Isaiah Bigelow with another three. Six-point game, foul in the backcourt. On Corey Tripp. So six team fouls. The part of me that says as soon as VMI inbounds it, foul again. Send them to the line. Make them win it at the free throw line over the last minute and nine seconds. Then they're going to go maybe get one attempt at a steal in the backcourt. And now they leave Mans all the way alone and under a minute to play now. VMI with the ball, a six point lead. Now Wofford's waited too long. Yeah, they gotta they, they gotta play it out now. Kerfman just looking for Stevens and somehow threads the needle and gets it to the big man again. Mack and Bigelow on the floor for Wofford as Larson gets the inbound. Good job by VMI making Wofford catch it there and not try to ro roll the ball. Bigelow's on fire. His third three of the last couple of minutes, 76-71. Terrier's playing some hard defense and a foul. It'll be Mans putting the ball in bounds. They go long, don't throw it long. Instead, just get it to Stevens. He's a great free throw shooter, almost a steal. And yes, it's gonna be a turnover. Sliding across the sideline was Kerfman. He gathered in the basketball. But watch this, he's just gonna slide in. Just barely touched the sideline with his left fist. I think we're gonna we're just getting some clarification on the call. Official right on it there. So Wofford ball with 29 plus seconds to go, down five. Quickly in the mat. Terriers can't wait too long. Can Bigelow do it again? That one's an air ball. Bottom has it stolen by Larson. Is there a foul? Yeah, they called Larson for a foul. Yep. Must have reached in and gotten the arm. Second on Larson. Watch this. The air ball. Bottom has it. Mm. Ooh, that was a lot uh, cleaner than it appeared on first glance. But we'll march down to the other end. And the Terriers got what they wanted. Now they get Bonham at the line with a one and one. They, but I admit they got the steal. Yeah. And a chance to execute a play. Bigelow, uh, a little short with that one. Had to rush it. Was, was off balance as well. 75% free throw shooter. Bonham misses the front end. Wofford still got life, but they've got to hurry. Larson looking to the bench. He's going to drive back out. Mack, wide open look. Misses the three. Stevens the rebound, and he is fouled. Mm. Wofford's had their chances all night long. But Jake Stevens, after the Safford foul, will try to ice this one. Look at the open look by BJ. He was too open, perhaps. Just drifted off to the left. Jake Stevens can add to his monster night. Oh, I think I know who the front runner for SOCOM Player of the Week is, depending on what happens over the weekend. Jake Stevens with 25 points and 12 rebounds. Make it 26, he'll get another free throw. He also got six assists. This, if he makes this one, it's over because he makes it a three possession game with 12 seconds left. Stevens does just that. And VMI is going to hit the road to Lexington with their first conference win in their back pocket. Trips not give it up. He lays it in. 78 71. Wofford fouls with 5.8 seconds to go. It'll go against Isaiah Bigelow. Ninth team foul, so it will still be a one and one. This time it'll be Sean Conway on the line. Fairly quiet, averages about 10 points a game. He had some foul trouble in the first half. He, he, he was saddled with two fairly early and sat for a, a good bit of the half. I think maybe that got him out of the game, but 
For me, he's kind of become their Swiss Army knife guy. It can do a little bit of everything for you. Kind of like Garrett Gilkison yep. was the last yep. couple of years. Conway hits it. 72% free throw shooter. He's a, a very good free throw shooting team. 81% as a team. He's another one of those guys that he, he, just exactly what you're looking for in a basketball player. He is so fundamentally sound. And uh, again, you said it in our open. Uh, Dan Earl doesn't get enough credit for the job he's done at VMI. Two free throws for Conway. 80 to 73. Final seconds ticking off the clock here. Larson will hoist one at the buzzer. And the VMI.